Hello guys, welcome to a 4 TV live stream. Um, please share the live video when you come. Please share, 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 share. I have another interview experience for you guys today. This one, you haven't seen it here yet. So like the video, share the video, like the page, follow the page so that, hey, next time, every time like new information comes up, you will get notification, okay? If you are not getting notification from this page, it looks like you're not coming here. And if you come here and you still don't get notification, maybe you haven't followed that. So follow the page. We have another interview experience. It's today, fresh, like hot, hot cake. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Interview experience, fresh, hot cake from Accra, Ghana. Remember I told you guys that there were um, at least four people in my Telegram group who were approved today. Congratulations to all those people. Congratulations. It's like, you know, after your interview and you have been approved, it's like you don't know what to do with yourself. It's like, should I go and sleep? Should I go and eat my favorite food? Should I do this? Should I do that? But congratulations to all those people. There are a couple of people we haven't heard from them. And there might have been, um, there were reports of two people who might have been refused visas today. Um, so sorry for those people. Um, but if you're one of those people who were refused, guys, know that we empathize with you. Um, but please share your experience, okay? So that we can all learn something. You know, when you share your experience, whether it's good or bad, Guess what? Somebody, you are going to save somebody, you know, the, the trouble. Okay. And it will also give the opportunity for others to also point where the problem was so that you can fix it. The fact that you have been refused an American visa right now doesn't mean that in the future, it will be the same thing. Your, your fortune could turn around your faith could turn around things could work around there have been guys who have been refused american visas before and then they finally got the visa me i am an example i was refused american visa so many times but i still got the visa one day so whether your interview um went well or it didn't go the way you had hoped it was still share your interview experience with us um we are not going to mention your name now inbox me give me your interview experience if you can uh include some of the answers the ones that you are comfortable with don't give us any information you are not comfortable with and um also if you'll be kind enough to let us know your school certificate if you're using your school certificate can you let us know your grades okay the, the ones that we are more interested in, the math, English, and science, especially for Ghanaians. Um, if you're from Kenya, let us know, are you the D minus group or you are below that? If you are using occupation, please let us know the occupation that you use, okay? Give us your occupation. Let us know the years of experience that you have so that it will give perspective to your interview experience. You don't want to say I had F in chains, but then I got my visa and then you, you, you don't mention that you had a job also. Okay. So it would be good thing for you to tell us if you are just a secondary school leaver, you just graduated, you didn't, um, you don't, you are unemployed. Mention that too. Okay. It will help your people. Please help us help others okay so that they too they can learn from you but today i have interview experience that i'm going to talk to you about and it is a divulatory interview that happened today okay and i'm going to go through it it will be posted on this page after this video okay even maybe through the live video it will be posted so after this video don't run away it will be here all right but guys welcome 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 to the live stream guys like the video share the video we are going to start, all right? So let me go from the beginning. The person said, interview experience, you know, and then I added a crack gun, okay? I want to make sure that people know where it's coming from. And so the interview date was November 11th, no, November 23rd, sorry, guys. I'm looking at like 23rd, 
11 <laughs> 2022 so it's today fresh fresh hi somebody said they can't hear me guys can you hear me now if you can't hear me check your own volume now okay i'm screaming really i'm screaming over here because like i'm so excited so the person was like hello guys i am grateful to you all for the support especially to allah this person is a muslim now he said i applied as a single applicant uh, in November, November 5th, 2021, right? 2021. And I checked for the results on May 10th and submitted my DS 260 on June 6, 2022. But I unlocked and resubmitted again on June 24th, 2022. Okay? 2022. So this person said they applied for the lotto November 5th. 2021 they check and found out that they were winner on uh may 10th and then they submitted the uh, immigrant visa application on june 6th but then later they realized they needed to make some corrections right so that was the unlocking part they did the corrections and then submitted their case again on 24th june okay now the person received the uh, second notification letter which is the interview letter on uh, September 9th, September 9th, this year, September 9th, and then they got their um, documents ready, um, did their medicals three weeks to their interview day, okay, because they got their interview appointment in September, so they did their medicals three weeks to their interview day, all right, and then they waited for their interview, which is today, they did it today, so they said, on uh, interview day, so got to the embassy around 6.40 a.m. Where I met some DV winners who stood for a while and where we were called in. So they had to wait outside a little bit before they were called inside the embassy. So they said they sat waiting in the yard till they were called to come inside the main building. When they went to the main building, they asked you know to go and pay the visa fee so she went to pay for the visa fee and they had to wait for a while and she was called to the counter five and she met a Ghanaian woman he said the woman asked her for her documents and the photocopies so you will take your original documents and the photocopies you have to make photocopies of your original documents and so the Ghanaian lady asked her for her documents she gave the documents to um the Ghanaian um, employee at the embassy. You know, the embassy, they have local employees. So, uh, you said the, the lady asked her some few questions about her marital status and where she lives at. She asked her, are you married? Where do you live at? And the lady answered. And then she said the lady filed her documents and then um, they asked her to go and wait. So, it looks like they asked her to go and sit down. So she said she sat down for 20 minutes and she was called to count at seven. And she met a pretty white lady. Uh, that is where the real interview began. That is where the main interview began for this lady. Okay? So she said when she approached the lady, she was approaching with smile and she greeted, you know, the exchange pleasantries you know maybe greetings you know maybe good morning whatever she told her he said hello so the consular officer said hello and she said hi and she met and the consular officer mentioned her name and asked her to swear and she did and then the consular officer asked her what is your date of birth the lady answered she asked are you married this lady responded no the consular officer asked where do you live Remember, this lady was asked by the Ghanaian woman who took her documents that, where do you live? The consul officer asked again, so who do you live with? And then the lady said, with my parents. Okay? So now, okay, let me go, let me go. It's like I'm getting too excited. They asked her, who do you live with? He said, with my parents. Remember on the DS-260, you have to put where your parents live at, the address. So... If you put, they live in a different place, the different address, and you put different address, and now they're asking you, and you're telling them something else. Okay, now let's go on. So they said, tell me about your education. So the lady told the consul officer about her education. She didn't say what she told the consul officer, but we'll go into those things. And then the next thing asked, what do you do? 
The lady said, I am unemployed at the moment, but I'm, I'm looking for employment. The lady is jobless at the moment, but she says she's looking for employment. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, and then the consular officer said, uh, is, is it hard to find job here? The lady said, yes. And then the consular officer said, I can see you have worked before. Tell me about it. And then the lady answered what her job was. And then the consular uh, officer asked, what are your plans when you get to the U.S.? And then the lady said, I would like to further my education and also work in health sector. And then the consular officer asked, why will you be staying in the U.S.? And then the lady responded. And then the consular officer said, congratulations, Khadija. I am keeping the photocopies of your documents and your passport. Take this sheet, register with DHL for passport pickup. And then that was the end of her interview. Now we are going to, you know, as somebody who say, spread, expansiate, and, you know, analyze her interview questions and the way she answered. All right? Now, aside the greetings, they ask her, are you married? Okay? So this lady is a single lady. She said in the beginning she applied as single. She is not married at the moment. So when they ask her, are you married? She said, no. Okay? I'm not married. And they ask, who do you live with? She said she lives with her parents. If you live with the roommate, you tell them, I live with my roommate. I live with my, boy my boyfriend. I live with my sister. I live with my brother. Whatever the answer is. Okay? Um, but in this situation, when she says she lives with her parents, on the DS260, they ask about your parents. Are they living? Are they alive or they are dead? If you say they are alive, they ask you, where do they live at? So be careful. If you're going to say you live with your parents, make sure that your present address, which you put on the DS260 and your parents, their house address, the same thing. Okay? You cannot say that your mother is living in Kumase. Your father is living in Kumase, and you, your present address in Accra. When you go for an interview, they ask you, who do you live with? We say with my mother. How can you have address in Accra and be living in Kumase? So that is why your DS-260, you have to print that thing. Go through it because your own information you have given them, they are going to use the same information to get you. So make sure you go through your DS-260 and see the answers you gave to make sure that your answers you are going to give at the interview, they match up, okay? So the next thing was that uh, they asked her, oh, uh, sorry guys, I missed one question. They asked her, do you have siblings, both old and young? And she said, yes, okay? Um, if you have siblings, you have brothers and sisters, siblings, please, not your auntie's children, no. not your, your mother's brother's children. They are not your siblings. Siblings from the same, you know, from the same parents, all right? Mm -hmm. And they said, tell me about your education. Now, you have to tell them your, about your education, your education level, all right? But let me go straight to, towards the bottom, you know? I ask this lady, I ask this lady that, you know, the way some controversy have been happening on this page, eh, I wanted her to give us her grades from secondary school. I wanted her to give us her occupation if she had any, okay? So, when they ask her about her education, this lady has secondary school education. She has HND and she has bachelor's degree. She has three. So when they ask her about her education, to me, if I were answering that question, I would say that I completed secondary school. I went to, you know, this place. You mentioned your secondary school name now, or your senior high school name now. And you say, I also have my bachelor's degree from University of... And then, if I, or I had my HND from this school, and I have my uh, bachelor's degree in business administration from University of... You mentioned the name, right? So you don't have to go into too much detail. But if your education level is secondary school, you can just say that, oh, I've, I went to this 
the school you mentioned the name of the school what you studied in the school and that is it you can add when you completed and that's it okay so but you have multiple you know levels of education secondary school uh bachelor's hnd those things master's degree phd then you want to talk about each one oh secondary school i went to secondary school at you know accra girls i went to and uh, yeah i went to second school at accra girls i did my bachelor's degree my first degree university of ghana legon uh, business administration and then i did my master's uh, in you know um, mba i did my mba like you can do that you know so it is not complicated don't complicate things okay all right so not too much details there let's go to the next question they ask her what do you do what do you do? So they were asking about her job at the moment. And the lady said, at the moment, I am unemployed. See you. She is unemployed, but she got the visa. That is for some of you, you are concerned. Hey, if I tell them I'm not working, they will not give me the visa. Ah, bah. Why can't you just tell the truth? The lady said, I'm unemployed. And then the consul officer asked, but she said, but I'm looking for a job. You see? I, I said this here, and I think maybe the lady took my advice. I said, when you tell you them you are unemployed, you can add, but I'm looking for a job. Just to let them know that you are not a lazy person now. You are doing something with your time, okay? So you don't just say, I'm unemployed, so you are just sitting there. No, I'm unemployed, but I'm looking for a job. Even though, hey, who is going to search and see that you're looking for a job? But you don't want to, you know, give the answer like that. And uh, those of you who are asking about the Telegram group, it's only for winners. Those who are winners, if you have been selected as a winner, just inbox me with proof that you are a winner before I can add you. It is not just a general group. The group is strictly for winners, all right? Now, um, they ask, the council officer is like, I can see you have worked before. Tell me about it. This lady was a uh, monitoring and guys, let me look at it again. Let me, because I asked her, I wanted, she, she's a monitoring and evaluation assistant. Monitoring and evaluation assistant. I asked her for that so that, you know, in case somebody was like, oh, but this lady, she had this grade there, but she got the visa. No, I wanted to add the occupation too, so that you can compare the two. Her job is monitoring and evaluation assistant, and she had three years of experience, but she was not working. She's not working at the moment. She worked, you know, three, she has three years of experience. That was her past employment, right? She brought the employment staff there, okay? So, so long as your job, the job that you used to do is within the last five years, bring that information there, especially if it helps, right? So she told them, this was what I used to do. Um, but at the moment, I am unemployed. And since she has three years of experience within the past five years, even if all her grades were F, they will still give her the visa if her job qualifies. Okay? All right. Let me go back to... So now let's talk about her grades. So this lady had E8 in core math. E8 in core math. She has C4 in English. And then in integrated science or science, she had C6. And then the, for her electives, she had all Bs. All Bs. Okay? She had Bs in all the elective subjects. But for math, core math, she had E8. In English, she had C4. In integrated science, she had C6. But remember, her job is monitoring and evaluation assistant with three years of experience she had hnd and she had a bachelor's degree and this lady has been approved so i hope you guys uh this gives you more information guys it lets you know like okay this is the person situation can i compare mine to hers Okay, I don't want you to just look at, oh, the lady had E8 in commerce, that was it. No, I want to give you the whole picture so that when you're comparing, you can compare better. All right, um, let me see some of the questions. Sam, what you're asking, um, how can you check the DS260 information? 
if you are a winner and you want to check your DSU, you just log into your DSU with the information, your your case number and your like your your date of birth and your your name. You log into it, um, and then you go to the last page, and then you can print the pages. You can print it. Uh, if not the last pages, when you log into your DSU click to open the application. When you open it, every page. There is like a, this small like a copy copy and paste sign. There is a print. You can click on print and it will allow you to print it. And then you go to the next page. It will allow you to print it. You go to the next page. It will allow you to print it. You may end up with like 11 pages. But that will help you know exactly what you put on the DS360. Uh, somewhere evergreen. He said, he said the fiscal year was done with 2022 by... People, but how come someone got interviewed today? It is not 2022. We are talking about 2023. Okay? Uh-huh. It's 2023. Today, the story I'm telling you about is DV 2023. No DV 2022 person is getting interviewed today. Guys, some of the interview experiences, uh, they are now coming in. And there are some of the interview experience from DV 2022 Initially, I was sharing them in my group, okay? Some of the interview experience from DV 2022. Initially, I was sharing them in the group. So when somebody is asking question on the page that, oh, I me, mean, I'm a pregnant woman, how would I take care of the thing? And I remember that, oh, in DV 2022, somebody had an interview and the person was pregnant. Let me copy that interview experience and share it again. And those ones, when I share, guess what? I don't change the year. I leave it there. If it's 2022, I always put hashtag DV2022. Okay? When the interview is from DV2022 time, I add hashtag DV2022. If it's 2023, I do hashtag 2023. So if I share a DV2022 interview experience, it is about the fiscal year that has ended. It is not a new interview. But what I'm talking about today, this is a new one. The person did it today. So it's not DV2022, DV2023, all right? Mm -hmm. So this interview experience that I just shared with you guys is going to be posted on the Facebook page. You'll be able to, uh, in a few minutes, it's going to be shared here uh, because I scheduled it. For it to be shared here so that you guys can read exactly what i just told you all right so if you're somebody who has been selected for the greek aloto just like i've been posting on this page and you don't want to join any groups well at least you can look at some of the interview experience that have been shared you can watch them and then apply them to yourself apply them to yourself wherever it helps you okay it is not compulsory for you to follow this page it is not compulsory for you to uh, read somebody's interview experience or even watch this video. If you watch it, whichever part that applies to you, then you use it. If it doesn't apply to you, nobody's forcing you for you to use it, okay? This is somebody's interview experience. It's for that person. I'm sharing it so that those of you who are you know, concern. What are the questions they'll be asking me? What are, so you will see the different types of questions people are getting at the interview. Okay. It is not common that some people go for interview. They ask them, uh, do you have siblings? Okay. So far the interview experience that I've shared on this page, I haven't seen them ask, do you have siblings? Okay. Especially the person is a single person. They apply for you if they went for interview and then they're asking them do you have brothers and sisters okay so that one um it is not common that is why you need to go through different interview experiences so that you can get comfortable because one interview experience may not offer you all the information for you okay aha uh -huh. may not offer you like will not give you like you know the whole picture of the type of interview experience uh interview questions that they ask but i am happy for these people who were approved today congratulations congratulations to you guys congratulations i see some i see some of the people who have been approved in this live video now congratulations guys i am so happy for you um remember to go and uh, register to get uh set up 
to get your passport okay you have to go and do that they gave you a letter telling you to go and register to get your passport from dhl go and do that so that you'll be able to go pick up your passport all right and the moment you get your passport inspect your passport look inside look at the expiration date of your visa and make sure that you depart from your country before the visa expires if you let the visa expire whilst you're in that country trouble for you okay um 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 gfk you said you filled the form but you didn't save a copy of it and can't remember all the information on the application form um if you're talking about um the registration that a lot of people don't even uh, keep that information right mm -hmm. um uh georgina you said you have had f9 but pass all of your electives and core subjects and then you have learned mechanic uh you as uh you are a mechanical technician do you qualify um georgina if i were you i would do just that one paper if I were you, I would just do that one paper. See, some of the jobs, it is not straightforward. For you to see, some of the jobs may be like six to seven. Some council officers will see six to seven as less than seven. In some embassies, six to seven, the council officer may look at it and, you know, it's like, okay, I'll consider it as a seven. So, Georgina, if... The, your only problem is the math. Please just register for the next year uh, of deck exams. Better it. Better it. So that it will give you the peace of mind. Okay? Uh -huh. Like I said, two people were refused. I heard that two people were refused today. We are yet to hear from those two people. Um, if they will share their interview experience, that would be nice so that others can learn from that. Okay? Imagine, you know, if me, the knowledge that I have, if I'm not sharing it here, a lot of people will suffer. The same way that you too, your experience that you have, when you share, it helps a lot of people. Okay, so let's do that. Um, let's see. Aminata, good evening. Yes, yes, congratulations to them. Congratulations to them. Um... Um, Pfizer, you say you're a winner. You just completed SHS last year, but the certificate is not in. How would I convince the consul officer? Well, um, uh, Aka, when you go, I don't know if you have been scheduled for interview yet. If you have been scheduled for interview and you still have not received your, your senior high school certificate, then when you go for the interview, you should tell them, tell the consul officer that you graduated just last year. Your results has not, uh, come in yet. When you tell them they will put your case in ap for you to meet the um meet the requirement okay if you tell them that the consul officer is not giving you face uh you you tell the consul officer that you believe that um you you still the rules require uh, allows you okay Ata, i hope you're listening when you tell the consul officer and let's say the consul the consul officer the ball right you can tell them that you believe the rules states that you should be able to meet the requirements by the end of the fiscal year, which is September 30th, 2023. So the consul officer should allow you, based on that, that statement, you want the consul officer to allow you to meet the requirement before September 30th, 2023. And they will allow you, okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to be bold. You have to be bold. Don't be like shaky, shaky, you know, stuff like that. Um, please, can you throw more light on what is meant by fiscal year? How come we are in 2022 and they are giving 2023 visa? I thought who applied will get per se. As Samuel, I have explained this many times, but let me say it again. The fiscal year uh, for the federal government, which also is used for the DV lottery, it starts from October 1st and ends on September 30th. That is how it is. The calendar starts first first month of the year 2023 is october october is the beginning of the new year for the government i'm not talking about we the regular people 
Okay, regular people, it will be January. But for government, the first month of the year is October. November is the second month. And then September will be like the December. Okay? So that is why the DV lottery, it ends, the fiscal year ends on September 30th of every year. Because the government's calendar, the federal government calendar, it ends on September. September, last day of September is the end of the year. So that is why DV 2022, it ended on September 30th, 2022. So the beginning of a new year is October 1st, 2022. Okay? We are still in the year 2022, but the federal government, it is 2023 fiscal year. They call it fiscal year. Okay? So that is why those who have won the lotto, uh, who won it this year, they couldn't go for interview until October 1st. Okay? So those of you who apply for the DV lottery this year, remember your confirmation number, it starts with 2024. 2024. But they will announce the winners in next year may 2023 which will still be the fiscal year for 2023 by september 30th 2023 will be the end of the year 2023 fiscal year 2023 then october 1st will be beginning of the fiscal year 2024 that is how it works okay so you they start from october to September the following year, October to September the following year. So that's why we are doing, they are doing the interview for DV 2023. All right. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Hi, William. How are you? Um, hi, oh boy. How are you? Hi, El Hassan. How are you? Hi, Ibrahim. Hi, Abdul. How are you? Um, um, oh boy, you said, can I just submit letter of sponsorship from my host or uh, I should feel the affidavit of support. Yes, your host must feel the affidavit of support for me. Please go and watch that video. Okay, there's no letter as sponsorship. Uh, in uh, DV lottery or family visa, uh, there's nothing like letter of sponsorship. They must feel the affidavit of support. It is a legal document. All right. Um, uh, please, what if I show my results to him? At a Pfizer. But you said your oh you said your certificate has not arrived, but you have your results. Okay, if you have the results, then you can take your results. I thought, I thought you were saying that you wrote the exams that the results has not been released. Not, it's not out yet. That is why I was telling you that if your results are not in when you go for the interview, you can tell them. But if your results are in, then you take your results to your interview. Okay? Uh huh. If you don't have the actual hard copy. Eh? Let's say you have written your secondary school certificate exams or a senior high school certificate exams. The results are not in, but you can check it online and see your results, right? When you're going for the interview, buy the results checker, the Wayek results checker, okay? The fact that you write Wasi doesn't mean that he is not Wayek. Please go to Wayek. They have vendors around the... Um, Around the country, not just Ghana, even Liberia, there's Wayek Resource Checker. If your country writes uh, exams conducted by Wayek and Dawasi, then they have vendors. You need to go and buy the voucher. Um, last time I was saying five cities, but somebody said it's 15 cities. Buy one. When you go for the interview, especially if you're not holding your results in your hand, if you're a Ghanaian, if you're not holding your results in your hand, Add the resource checker, the Wayek resource checker. Buy it's 15 CDs. When you go, you give it to them. You will bring your own printed resource, right? If you don't have the original one in your hand because it has not been released, then you can give them the resource checker. You said this is the voucher to check my resource. Um, it has not been released so that they can verify for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Aminata, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Please share the live video. Um, so this thing has, it should be posted right now. The interview experience will be posted on this page. You'll be able to read it and see. Um, John, thank you so much. Um, yeah, you'll be able to read the interview experience. 
Um, I want people to be in the habit of reading. I want people to be in the habit of, especially if you're giving us your interview experience, please. I mean, your name is not going to be in there unless you put your name in there, right? Like this lady, she put Khadija. I mean, you know, you know the number of Khadija in Ghana. There are so many of them. So you wouldn't know which Khadija this one is. But see, we want you to give us your grades, right? Tell us. Tell us your grades so that at least somebody, your brother or your sister here, your fellow Ghanaian, even if not a Ghanaian, if the person from Liberia, the person from Senegal, they look at it and they can compare. It's like, okay, this person had this and had me too. I have that. I'll be fine, right? If you don't share that information, then somebody will go there. It's like, you to go and find out. You to go and find out. The person is going there and they'll be wasting their money. So we want you to, you know, um, uh, share, give more information so that it will help others. Uh, David, I'm doing well. Uh, George, uh, you're welcome. Um, um, hard work pays. You said not only results, but transcript and testimonial. That will be too much. That will be... Transcript is only necessary if you are in the university and you don't have your degree yet. If you are still in the university, you haven't graduated yet, then you can add your transcript. If you have graduated and you have your, your degree there, you have your senior high school certificate, the results are there. Your transcript is an overkill. It's in too much. Okay? Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Um, Aminata, you said you apply with your family, but when you win, you'll be going alone with that and without taking your family. No problem. No problem, my sister. Um, what about we with a technical student who didn't write English and math in our, um, that one, you have to rely on your, you have to rely on your job. That is me, my opinion. Okay. Um, see, now that I'm starting to ask people for the occupation, some people give the interview experience and they don't give us the occupation. They don't give us their certificate. Okay. So this lady, I actually asked her and she was kind enough to tell us her certificate so that you know people will know as long as people share with me i'll share with you but guys there's some information i don't know at the moment because the embassy will not say you ask them they don't tell you they just give you run around they will not tell you so know that some of the information that you guys want i may not have them if i don't have them i cannot create stuff for you right um so when people share I will let you know. So the technical education, guys, I'm yet to have somebody tell me, like me, this is my, this is what I did, this is my certificate, and this is what I did, and I got approved. When somebody shares that with me, I will share with you guys, all right? Um, William, you said, what about if you win and you are pregnant and having given birth, how do you add the unborn? But what would you be adding the unborn child, William? William, let me laugh a little bit, okay? When you have an unborn child and you go for the interview, why would you be adding the child? For what? It is only the people who are alive that we give visa. If the child is not born yet, why are you concerned about adding the unborn child? Worry about the people who are alive, okay? Uh huh. If you you don't have if your if your wife is pregnant, they don't need visa for the baby. The baby can be born here. But if they give birth in your country, then you need to let the embassy know. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel said, I could not include my family in the DV lottery. Can I still process a single? You can, but if the embassy finds out, they will, they will refuse your visa. Um, it's part of the rules. Um, um, Moses, how are you? Um, Alhasa, thank you. Um... Um, let's see. Oh boy, you said if, if you, if you had only D7, you have D7 in science only, would that be considered? Maybe, maybe. Guys, I'm telling you, if you are in that situation, if you can, just rewrite that paper. Because you are, you are banking on maybe. 
a consular officer might consider it, another consular officer might not consider it. If I were you, I would not put myself in a situation of maybe better that grade so that you remove the maybe over your head, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Um, Buhari, you said you are you don't have a degree, but you are an SHS student. The requirement is the same. Um, senior high school education and that. Um, or he that we said your job is EMT. Go ahead and check and see. If your job qualifies, then you shouldn't worry about the type of certificate you are holding. Okay. So Ahini David, if you are going to check and EMT qualifies. Then don't worry about whether you your exams you wrote English or math. Don't even worry about that one. Okay? Uh -huh. Um Um hard work pace, you are asking but they said Ghana if they were supporting me. But the video this live video is not just for Ghanaians. This live video is not just for Ghanaians. When people are asking questions, they might not be in Ghana. If the person is not in Ghana, they are in another country and the country requires affidavit of support. Then they must take affidavit of support, right? Uh -huh. I have done that. I have explained. I have mentioned some of the countries that collect affidavit of support. And I've mentioned the countries that, that I know that don't ask for affidavit of support. So if somebody asks for affidavit of support, they ask affidavit of support question. I am going to assume that they have... They have Go on to watch that video and they know that the embassy is asking for affidavit of support, right? Mm -hmm. So if you ask me a question about affidavit of support, I'm going to answer because you ask me about affidavit of support. Whether you have found out whether they need affidavit of support or not, that is not the question you ask me. If you ask me, does Ghana need affidavit of support, I will answer you. But if you are asking me, uh, what do I need to do with affidavit of support? Do I need a letter of this or affidavit of support? I will answer that question, okay? So I just answer the question you ask me. Um, let's see. Um, Mr. Samuel, I'll call you. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to finish this video and I'll give you a call back. All right? I can see you're watching the live video, but I will call you, all right? Um, 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 Moses, you said your job is mechanical engineer and operator of different kinds of uh, machines, how to apply, different, different kinds of machines, how to apply. I don't understand your question, but if you're asking about how to apply for the loto, then the registration is over. It, it's too late for you to ask how to apply. But if you want to find out if your job qualifies, please go to onet, onetonline.org onetonline.org go there and check and see if your job qualifies okay uh -huh. um uh abdu you're asking do i have to do passport for my children yes any human being who will be on the plane must get a passport it doesn't matter if the baby is three days old your babies still need passport um, Eminata, I mean, even if my family are not traveling with me, will I take them for the interview? No, you don't have to take them for the interview. But let me tell you this. Sometimes it helps. I remember one of the DV 2022 winners, when he was going for interview, we were communicating the entire time till he went for interview. And when he went for the int, before he was going for interview, he asked me, um, should I go alone? Because he was... He has a baby, he has a baby mama, and he applied as a single man, which is correct. So he asked me, when I'm going for the interview, should I go with my baby mama and the child? I said, if she will go with you, go with her. She can stay outside. When they ask you about, you know, uh, so do you have a child? Yes. Uh, where is the mama? Oh, she's, she's outside. See, sometimes those things, it, it adds some credibility to your case, okay? So, if they will go with you, good. If they will not go with you too, that's fine. But if they will go with you, even if they are outside of the embassy, staying outside of the embassy, when they ask you about them, you can, oh, my, my husband, he's outside with the boys, with my kids, with my daughters. You know, it makes them, you know, see, you know, 
But if you're going to go with them too, please prepare a little bit. Let them, you know, it's like just in case they also ask them questions. All right. Sometimes it helps. Um, Elon, you said, what about D7 with 10 years of work experience? Work experience as what? Work experience as what? Um, so, uh, Beatrice, you said you have both Wasi and Novdek. Yes, take both of them to the interview, okay? Especially if one of them is helping the other, okay? Bring both. Um... Uh, oh boy, you're asking, can you assist someone in finding a host in America after winning the lottery? So this is, this is something that I cannot promise that I can, um, but there might be, there might be some, you know, ways somebody can, you know, get uh, a host, get a place to stay. But this is the thing, guys. The reason why I am being wishy-washy with this thing, okay, let me be honest with you. There are some people... They will tell you they need help, they need help, they need a place to stay, they cannot do this. The moment you put your neck on the line for them, then they change their mind. And then they embarrass you with the person you ask to help them. And that is the thing I am trying to avoid. Okay? I have worked so hard to build Wofoy TV for the past a little over two years. I don't want anybody with their wishy-washy wishy behavior to, you know, to tarnish what I have built. So that is why when people ask about finding a hosting, I try not to put my neck on the line for anybody. Because for some people, when you put your neck on the line, they will cut it. They will let people cut it. Okay, they will tell you, sister, I don't have a place to stay. I don't have a place to stay. And then you, you, you are able to convince somebody to take them. And then later, they will, not, they will not even call the person. They will go to a different place. And then see, now the person is like, why did you waste my time and tell me about this? And I prepared for the person and the person didn't come. I, that is why I don't like you know i try to stay away from that but if you are a serious person there might be a way but i'm not promising anybody okay um if you're looking for a host you should talk to the people who already know you as for those people when you screw them up they know where to find you uh-huh um let's see um immediately when you win uh, how do you pay for the ds260 you don't pay for ds260 um you will pay at the interview at the interview um uh, georgina you're saying if you're if you check on your job is svp uh six less than seven is it okay it depends on the consul officer some people have taken that and they were approved let me give you an example a guy took his to the interview he was an immigration officer and that was the svp when the person went their grades were not that great they had SVP of that. They got their visa. Somebody was also a mechanical engineer from um, Cameroon. They went for interview. The SVP was somewhere around that. They didn't even consider it. So that is why I tell you that you, you have only one problem with one grade. Just register for the NovDEC and take care of that to avoid any complication okay mm -hmm. um let's see um i mean that i've answered your question um it's like i'm going through that how will and uh, how will electrician prove his work experience you just have to bring um Employment letter, right? You you bring your employment letter. Um, um, Elan, or is it Elan or Elian? Elian, Elian, is it how your name is? I've been saying Elan. Um, it's onet, onetonline.org, all right? Um, oh boy, you are asking how long that the interview lasts. It depends. If you complicate your situation, they can... If you have a complicated pass, they can, your interview can go longer. Some people, it takes five minutes. Some people, it can take 30 minutes. Some people, they, somebody said they felt like their interview was two hours. So it depends on how 
you know your situation okay uh-huh so guys i just wanted to come in and talk to you about this uh, just this uh, interview experience has been posted on this page you can go through um for other questions we will have a different live video on a different day for them but not today um i hear you um somebody said about the svp i hear you i will make a video about that but today i just wanted to talk to you about the um interview experience michael i've already made a video talk about what to do go to my youtube channel of tv i've talked about that um all right so congratulations to all the people who were uh, approved today whether you're from ghana wherever you come from congratulations that was a nice thanksgiving gift tomorrow is thanksgiving day in america and so that was a wonderful gift to you um but do what you need to do about getting your um, passport pickup set up so that you'll be able to go pick up your passport. But guys, thank you so much for uh, joining this live video. The interview experience is going to be posted here. If you have questions, guys, go to the YouTube channel and watch the videos. Okay? A lot of the questions you have, I've already responded to them in videos. I've made videos for them. Go and watch them. Okay? Um, if you want to do one-on-one -on -one talk, you have to book consultation. Um, that one, I'm being transparent about it. Right? Um, I'm not an agent because sometimes some people think that I am an agent. No, I am not. I am not an agent. If you're a DV lottery winner and uh, you want to join the Telegram group, you need to inbox me with proof showing that you are a winner. It is for winners only. If you're not a winner, you're not get getting in that group. So those of you who registered for the DV lottery this year, I pray that come May, many of you will get to join the winners only group that group is winners only okay so hopefully many of you will get to join that group come next year may all right guys thank you so much for your time uh like the page follow the page um thank you chairman tim uh gabriel thank you for joining thank you uh augustine um but thank you guys um asam um go on the for tv page there's a way to inbox me there's a message you click on that, it will allow you to inbox me from there. All right? So, good luck to everyone. Good luck to you. Guys, share your interview experience to help others. Whether you talked to me before, you didn't talk to me before, you haven't talked to me before, just share your interview experience. Let it help others. Let it help people from your country. Okay? All right? Um, so, um, thank you guys, and I'll see you um in another video i don't know when i'll see you guys maybe later today i'm not sure yet but thank you so much um guys subscribe to the youtube channel okay we are trying to hit 15k and i'm almost getting to uh 11 000. okay guys help me help me get there help me get there help me get to the 15k okay it takes one subscription one subscription one subscription and then it will get there. All right? Guys, thank you so much for your time. I love you. And you'll have a happy Thanksgiving holidays. All right? Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.